Good evening, it being Wednesday, October 21st, 2015. The, uh, we don't have Back to the Future tonight, the, uh, Rob. I wonder what happened back so many years ago when, when Marty McFly pushed the magic button on the time machine. Oh my goodness gracious. All right, the first thing we, we can't do is we can't approve the minutes from the meeting because Mr. Uh, Mr. Austin was not here, so we'll put the minutes aside. General business. Um, just to update the board, uh, Mr. Austin, especially what happened last week, um, last meeting, we met with the uh, McDonald's pallet, AMS pallet company from down on uh, Clean Way, and they, for a hookup system for their sewer, and we approved their, uh, their concept, and that was going to be taken to the Public Works Department. Uh, second, we uh, alerted Ms. Langer to order the flu vaccine since the town was not going to get any from the state. But Arthur has some decent news for us, and I'll let him give that in the uh, health agency report. And finally, the Merrill Lane situation. Um, the attorney came by, and we talked at length. And do we have enough? We'll have an update on that, I'm sure. No. Okay, fine. And that's about it. I have nothing else to report. Uh, that being said, the I, the permits, Rob, there's one, just one permit to sign for the new subway that's going to be opening up in the uh, Hennessy Plaza at the north end of town. They're moving from the south end of town to the north end of town. Um, and that said, that's the only permit we have, Art? That is the only one we have. Okay. We'll have dozens of them in a couple of months. We'll yes. Renewals all come about. You know, speaking of permits, Art, for, for the folks' sake out there in uh, the viewing lane, how much did we generate in income to the town with the permits from last 2014? It's about eight to ten thousand uh, dollars on permits, just the permits themselves. There are other things that um, you know generate revenue. There's the dumpster fees. There's the um, uh, the well, uh, the private well up every three years. Mm -hmm. kind of thing. Okay. So, uh, inspectional services generates quite a bit of money, um, you know, beyond the water health tool, mm -hmm. the permits. And, you know, uh, I know, that's the, I, I forgot that we're under the umbrella of now inspectional services and not yeah. simply the Board of Health. It, it actually you know, it's, it's working out well. Good. All right, the Public Health Nurses Report. Good evening, Ms. Orger. Hi. Um, usual business, but for sure, to make some visits. On a flu update, um, vaccines were ordered in the lot. We got them. 60 total. There's 20 quadrivalent recommended for 60 plus and 40 trivalent. Um, the cost was 743, which was a little higher than we expected. Mm -hmm. um, 35 vaccines have been given so far. Commits at Town Hall, Council Aging, and Police and Fire. Commits that are scheduled 1028, a second Police and Fire. 1028 uh, public court and 114 Manwood. And I'll in contact with Dr. to get some more. Okay. All right. Um, we had one case from through the Maven Network from last month. Is that anything uh, going on with that case? She's still out of the country. Okay. So. All right. As long as she's just out of the country. Okay. okay. <laughs> well, that's good. Okay. Anything else? Just like that? No, okay. nothing else crazy with the Maven. Okay. Okay, thank you. All right, health agency report, Arthur, if you could uh, take us down the list. Uh, first of all, the uh, flu vaccine uh, coming from the town of Duxbury is uh, about 90% there. We've got to get a pool from DPH and a uh, farm from Duxbury to DPH to uh, get it done. It looks like it's going to be a done deal. It was very nice of them to you know, give us the opportunity to get the uh, Additional vaccine. They're not going to be administering in Duxbury this year, apparently, and uh, we, we're going to be the beneficiary. It saved us probably five or six hundred dollars. So mm -hmm. it, it's, uh, it's good to have friends in various places. <laughs> um, on the Merrill Lane property that you mentioned, um, that is now uh, vacant. There is uh, supposedly no one uh, residing there, and they're cleaning it out. So that will be um, 
I put the attorneys who will take up um, for the property owner. They'll deal with the bank and, and do whatever they're going to do, but it won't include us because... Um, with nobody being there? Right, we'll, we'll be out of the mix. Um, where we will get back in the mix is if they sell it and go to occupy it, they right. better make a sewer connection. Right, they have to. Now, that where it's going to be a short sale, whatever it's, whatever it's going to be, right. foreclosure, they to all occupy it, that the mandate is to hook up the sewer or to put a new septic system in. Either yeah, or? They can't put in a new septic system because they don't have the room for it by okay. today's standards. So mm -hmm. They wouldn't be able to, even the waivers, they're so close to the water that yep. um, they couldn't do it. They, they have to hook up to the sewer. Um, just, just, not to, just as a question out there, did they voluntarily vacate the property? Yes. We, we so, met the attorney came last last month yep. and we sat down and his he made a one he made a great presentation that he was hoping and he was pretty positive that it would be vacant by this by by the our next meeting. Mm -hmm. And he assured us that if it wasn't it would be. Mm -hmm. So it is vacant. We're out of the mix at this point. However, we'll get back into it as you say. I talked to attorney we switched in as recently as today and he um, was very happy with the way he's been treated, his clients been treated, that he realized this has been going on since 2008, and you know, they, they've had several bites at the apple, and um, they, they just weren't able to come up with the uh, financing to set it, uh, set it right, and um, you know, they're going to have to make a deal with the bank for a deal of foreclosure or foreclosure directly, you know, or maybe the bank will come up with the money to connect to the sewer. You know, I mean, anything is possible. That's an unlikely scenario. Do we, do we have any assurances that the property will not be reoccupied in its current state? <coughs> it, it can't, right? Yeah, I mean, you, you well, um, if no, no, that's that's the agreement we have. Yeah. Once these last two folks are out, that the property was going to be sold. That's why. Um, no, I'm with you in theory. Well, but in reality, yeah. I mean, it's, well, the attorney sat last. Yeah, I, yeah, you, you know, as well too. yeah. Been stranger things that have happened. Um, so maybe we can keep an eye on it. Yeah. Yeah. As public safety um, to keep an yeah. eye on it. Mm -hmm. We've got two court cases that, that are coming up in the next uh, several weeks that both involve properties on Union Street, and um, we have danced and danced with these folks uh, for several times, and it's just come down to you know there were criminal violations there uh, because you're breaking. Deal that you made with the court prior to right. because both of them have been in court in the past, and they are going to um, have to pay the price. Now, the the we had we just forwarded our information to the courts. Ultimately, the courts made the final decision on what had to be done in those, both those properties, right? Right. I mean, we had asked for certain uh, assurances and certain things to be done. The court went along with us and. And as they normally do, quite frankly, the courts and the judges and the magistrates have been very supportive uh, of us because we're trying to clean up a blight in many instances or, you know, get a property back to its proper use so that you don't have a single family being used as a seven mm -hmm. you know, resident sure. rooming house, that kind mm -hmm. of thing. And, uh, and in the case of the other fellow on, on um, Union Street, I mean, he's on a scrap guy. Right. He's just got a yard full of junk and there's no more direct or kind of way to put it. So between Dan Moriarty and I, we, we have um, gotten some help from Dave DeLuca from uh, the attorney's office, and we have uh, filed on, on these two houses as well. Okay. And, uh, you know, we, we've got a pretty good success rate. Okay. Um, anything on the transfer station? There is no news on the transfer station. Um, there, there was, you know, since we were talking about that in the town, there was a property on East Druid Hill Road. Uh, you may be familiar with that because you've got to go through Randall right. to get to it. Off of Woodlawn Avenue, yes. Right. And, uh, and that actually comes in dead ends, as I learned the other day. Right. Um, you need to come in from Center Street, right. East Druid Hill, and go to what looked like a driveway. And, mm -hmm. and, uh, there was a house there that um, 1,400 square feet of the lot and a portion of the house are in the town home. Right. And there was an order uh, from the Board of Health in Randolph to clean up 
collect the uh, metals and debris and whatnot. And they're looking for any kind of uh, help we can give. Uh, I told them there would be uh, very little chance that there would be financial help, you know, coming their way because we don't have the budget for it. But would we contact the South Shore elders or, you know, a social agency? Um, I, I can see that we can do that. Um, this has just come up within the last couple of days. So okay. I haven't had a lot of so time. Just for clarification, me. what is the request exactly? To to give them some kind of assistance to, to the town of Randolph because they have, you know, basically uh, put up the manpower to have somebody there while the cleanup is going on. They the cleanup of someone's private property? Um, yeah, but some of it was on, on the road as well. I mean, it, it, it's, um, it's kind of a fine line in that area as to where the road is and where the, where the neighbor's the properties. Uh, so um, they, they were. You know, they were answering to neighbors who were calling to complain of the condition of the property and the condition of the exterior. And, and you know, they had an old van there and that was kind of in the road. And, um, you know, they had two nice gentlemen that, that own the house, they just got a little overwhelmed and, um, you know, they have cleaned it up. Uh, they got a way to go, but they are 100% you know, better than they were. And, uh, and they're being cooperative. And, and Randolph is has been great. So, if we can extend the reach out to South Shore Elder Services, because the gentleman holds over 60, I believe, um, <coughs> that's about the extent that we can give them. Yeah, that's fine. Um, you know, short of offering for me to monitor the progress. I mean, you can take a swing through, but yeah. other than other than that, I don't know what, what more we could do. I mean, is there anything? You know, social world, I mean, sure, they must have contacts with people that just to come in and take the junk away. I mean, the junk's, that's money. Yeah, the, the, uh, the problem is there was three dumpsters used. Um, three dumpsters? Yeah. Uh huh. I mean, how do you mean used? Just with debris in them? With debris in them, yeah. Uh huh. Have, have they been there for quite some time? It looks it, yeah. I mean, I, I've never been down there before, so. Oh, did you make your way down, or did you? Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. I, I, okay. Um, I went there and I met um, Steve uh, Slavinsky, who was the animal control officer, and you know, kind of helped out with you know enforcement regulations and things. And he, he was terrific. To, if, if I have to say anything about anybody from Randolph, he and John McVeigh were were terrific. You know, in dealing with the uh, people because it's a sensitive issue. You're telling mm -hmm. somebody to clean up their property and throw away, you know, things that belong to them and, you know, I mean, as much as it's one man's junk is another man's treasure, but, sure. you know, Steve yeah. handled it really beautifully, you know, he, um, he, he helped them, you know, get dumpsters and helped them get organized and um, it goes a little beyond his job description, I think, and, you know, I think you need people like that in the town. Well, if that's, you know. Uh, I don't know what, what more we could do. So uh, just, any, just any do that. Any assistance you can offer? You yeah. Can offer and yeah. Hopefully it'll work out. Okay. Okay. Anything else? Um, Permits, inspections. You, when are you going to start them up pretty soon, aren't you? Well, I've actually inspected the uh, three schools, uh, three school cafeterias in the last week of 10 days. Yes, I was informed that you made a surprise visit to the John F. Kennedy School. Yeah. The principal happened I made to. Well, surprises because that way they you catch them working and circumstances that they're running around on a day-to-day -day basis, but um, I mean, people can be very pleased with the whole work, uh, food and cafeteria system because they keep a, a clean operation in all three schools. They they all pass and there were no violations of any kind. I mean, it, it was um, it was great. Good. Good. <coughs> okay, anything on the new business hat? Do we have anything? No, we're, um, we're uh, good to go. We have a um, short agenda tonight and um, okay. I don't think there's any business left to cover. Okay. I'll accept the motion to adjourn. So moved. Seconded by Mr. Callanan. All those in favor? 2-0. Good night, everybody.